everybody, welcome back to my channel. And today I've got some very, very special guests. It is Jonathan and Alan from Cinema Therapy. Whoop, whoop. Hello. Very special. <laughs> very special guests. I'm so excited. Hi, Hannah. We're so happy to be here. This is awesome. Hello. I'm so happy that you're here. So today we're going to be doing something very silly and ranking a bunch of parents in movies. What are your qualifications to be able to do this with me? I am a parent of three children. Their ages, I should know this. 13, 11, and 8. <laughs> Two boys and a girl. And so far, none of them is a criminal. So I'm doing fine. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or they haven't been caught, so you're also doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, pretty good parenting. <laughs> Uh, I'm a parent of five, uh, one stepchild and uh, four together with my wife. And I'm also a licensed family therapist. Oh, so you actually have qualifications. I have a piece of paper that I was handed that said, yes, you're qualified. He also has a master's degree, so that's something. That's something. And I have one child. So between us, nine kids and Woo! an interest in movies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, so I've picked a bunch of movies and I've also come up with some very interesting categories, shall we say. I, I want this to be a very lovely ranking that it's not judging anyone's parenting, but maybe judging some fictional parents a little bit. We'll see. These are such kind ranking tiers. They're so sweet. <laughs> are you sure you're not Canadian? <laughs> no, I've just been on the internet too long, I think. <laughs> so I want to take you through our categories. Okay, so we have parenting goals. And obviously mm -hmm. this is subjective, so it's just like, for you, like inspirational parenting. Our next tier is weird dark crazy, little nod to Barbie, uh -huh. and the weird dark crazy mums of Barbie. You can interpret this tier however you like, really. It's open. But, but weird dark and crazy in this case is seen as a positive. Very much, in the way that it's seen in Barbie, I think. Which is just yeah. like parents actually having their own inner world and personality outside of their status as a parent. That's kind of how mm. I think of it. Okay. In the way that you don't know if I'm raising non-criminals or exceptional criminals. <laughs> Exactly. Weird, dark, and crazy. The next one is you'll understand when you're older. And to me, as a parent of a toddler, this is for me like, maybe I'll be judging people's parenting, but actually I know fuck all because I've not gotten to that stage of parenting yet. <laughs> So this is kind of the like, I think there's something bad going on here, but I don't want to say anything in case this comes to bite me in the ass like in 10 years time. That's what this tier means to me. Okay, love it. <laughs> and you can tell me as, as parents of older children, you'd be like, Hannah, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> the next tier is you're doing great, which is meant to be a genuine statement because I just feel like, especially at the stage I'm at, I've had encounters with other mums, parents at this stage. And I've literally said like, you're doing great in a really sincere way to one of my friends and she just started crying. Like it's sometimes just the thing that you need to hear. <laughs> it's, it's just what they need to hear. So this is not a typical sarcastic British, like, oh, you're doing great, love. Not one you're of those. doing great, honey. No, it's just like genuinely like they're okay. doing the best with what they've got. And yeah. it may not be like parenting goals, but you're doing great. And then the final tier is bare minimum. And <laughs> this could also be interpreted in different ways, which is just like, you're really not putting it in any effort as a bad thing. But then also we all have those days where we just can't. And the bare minimum of parenting is just enough. And that's what you, that is all you're capable of. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> The kids ate food and wore clothes today. I succeeded. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you get it. Okay, so those are our tears. And now we can dive straight in to some of these films and parents. So I wanted to start off with Everything, Everywhere, All at Once with Evelyn and Waymond. So, okay, if you put Evelyn and Waymond together, uh -huh. that's a very different grade than like Waymond would get on his own. Okay, so let's do... <laughs> <laughs> What grade are you giving Waymond on his own? Oh, Waymond on his own is parenting goals, right? Yeah, Waymond on his own is parenting goals. I think I would agree. That's like an easy one for me. Yeah. He's sweet. He's understanding. He's non-judgmental. He's open and available. He listens. He, he's concerned. He cares. He gives feedback without commanding, which I think is cool. Well, he's, he's like the hero we all need, right? But not the one we deserve. Not the one we deserve <laughs> at all. 
and he's a different kind of dad and masculinity that you normally see on screen, which is very refreshing. Yes. What about Evelyn, though? Okay, so Evelyn goes from, there's an arc. She starts at bare minimum, and then she goes into weird, dark, crazy. And then I she- I think she mostly lands at weird, dark, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree with the weird, dark, crazy. Like, I think about the relationship with the rocks. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> I'm just like, it's just weird, dark, and crazy. And like with everything that her and Joy go through, I think they then can't not have a weird, dark, crazy parent-child relationship after that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's it, how I feel. That straddles the line with parenting goals or you're doing great. And the reason for that is because they're both weird, dark, and crazy, that it's a fit. Mother, daughter, like they're be they become oh, a Oh, because fit. they're both that, it actually turns into you're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, by the, by the end that. of the film, like she, she starts off very judgmental. Judgmental. She starts off very uh, asserting her will on her daughter instead of honoring her daughter's agency. And then she goes into this place of genuinely loving and caring for her daughter, which she always has, and trying to, okay, Joe, Joe, Bu, Juju Chewbacca. <laughs> Joe, Chewbacca. <laughs> no, but she says Juju Chewbacca. I know. <laughs> is, is, it's all her fault. We have to stop her. And instead of actually looking at herself as a mother and seeing, oh no, my daughter is depressed and anxious in very large part because of how I've approached parenting, and I need to take accountability for that. And when she steps into accountability for it, she's still weird, dark, and crazy with her daughter, but they connect and it's beautiful. But weird, dark, and crazy for her weird, dark, and crazy daughter is actually... Right. Okay. Hannah, what do you think? Where where are you ranking them? I think because most of the film she's in the weird, dark, and crazy, that's mm -hmm. where I'm landing with her, I think. Okay, so majority of screen time is what we're going Majority of screen time, weird, dark, and okay. crazy. Boom. Fabulous. Okay, next up are the parents in Easy A, because we're recording a nice. whole cinema therapy episode for Easy A, so I had to include them. And they are Dylan Rosemary. Who knew their names? It's Stanley Tucci and Patricia Clark. Stanley Tucci and Patricia Yeah, that's, that's who it is. I kind of feel like we can talk about both of these in the same breath. They're very similar and have most of the same scenes together. Before I re-watched Easy A for the Cinema Therapy episode, they were parenting goals for me. And now, I'm not so sure. Oh my. Ooh, let us know, tell us more. They're definitely charming as hell. Like, that can never be oh taken away God, from them. Oh my God, they're brilliant. Yeah. They're so funny. I think on this recent rewatch, I kind of felt like they were trying to be their daughter's friend too much and not her parents. I think the movie plays differently when you're a parent. When you're not a parent, you watch it and you go, yes, I wish my parents were like that. They're so cool. Why can't my parents be just chill and funny? They're just chill and funny and all about autonomy and not drawing any boundaries and, and just whatever I do is fine. And you watch it now and you're like, uh, maybe you'd step in a little more. <laughs> if your teenage daughter is doing the things that Olive is doing, boundaries are probably a good thing to yeah, set. Yeah, so probably. What ranking would we give them? Because here, okay, so here's what I like. I do like that they honor her boundaries. I like dad makes it known that he's available and that he cares, but he's also not going to come in, you know, guns a blazing and trying to fix her life, yeah. right? I like that mom steps in and shares her experience in a very non-shaming way. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all beautiful. They don't do a ton of instructing or recognizing hey our daughter's a minor like what they're doing is great five years down yeah if she was 23 <laughs> yeah right or even like three years down but like when, when she's legally an adult making her own decisions yeah. if she's an adult and they're saying hey because my mom used to say once you're 18 I did the best I could yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't to say I'm not here for you or I don't care. It's just like, at that point, you're making your own decisions. But Olive is what, 16? Yeah. And so a, a little bit more of a, hey, you're kind of torpedoing your life right now. And we care about you. So let's see if we can work something out together. I don't know. Like, there's an argument to be made. Well, they're doing crush style parenting. Crush from Finding Nemo, where they're just standing back and seeing what their daughter does. and they're... Let us see what he will do. Right? But you go too far into that, and it's Henry Jones Sr., where he's just like, I taught you self-reliance by just like hanging back right. and doing nothing. <laughs> by completely ignoring you. Yeah. They're actually parenting like Henry Jones if Henry Jones showed up with warmth and compassion and humor, but also like just didn't give two craps about what Hindi does. Just like, go do your thing, right? Yeah. And maybe that's a little, they do care. They care about all of, but they're not being parents. They're being friends. And again, it plays differently when you're a parent. Yes. <laughs> Watching this as a parent, I'm like, I would say something. Yeah. When I watched this in my early twenties as a, you know, a single guy who had a strained relationship, his very controlling parent. <laughs> Uh, I was like, oh, parenting goals, they're so great. 
<laughs> now I think I'm kind of somewhere in between you're doing great, but the sarcastic version. And, <laughs> and you'll understand when you're older, because I don't have a 16-year-old daughter who's going through a easy A phase. Situation. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that stood out for me as well was that Olive doesn't actually feel comfortable opening up to her parents about what is happening, yeah. which is very telling to me. Yeah. Like, she doesn't want to tell them. Yeah, and in this case, I think for a lot of kids it would be they're scared of judgment. In this case, it feels more like, well, what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> like if I tell them what are they what are they gonna do they're gonna make some snarky comments <laughs> exactly I don't need wit right now like <laughs> So where are we putting Dill and Rosemary? I agree with Alan's ranking. I, I put them at, you're doing great. You're you know. doing great. Yeah. In the comedy department, like being an adult child of theirs, like amazing. I yeah. would kill to have those two characters be my actual current parents. And to be fair, if it's a toss up between a harsh controlling parent and a parent who is warm and nurturing and caring, but also just kind of hanging back and letting you figure it out, I'd take the latter any day of the week. But I think there's a happy meeting. I think there, there's there's a bit more involvement. Warm and caring and compassionate and some boundaries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just some. If you guys want to hear us talk even more about Easy A and get more insight from Hannah and lots of insight from Jonathan and snarky comments from me, check it out on Cinema Therapy. <gasps> Next up is Barbie. And the mum character in this is Gloria. Did you know that she was called Gloria? I didn't. <laughs> her name is Gloria. Where would you put this weird, dark, crazy mum? Did I create an entire tear for her? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel shepherded into an answer for that at all. <laughs> No, this is a free-for-all. She can actually honestly go anywhere. Uh, why don't we start? I want to know why you created an entire category just for her. I thought it was a great description, and I was desperately trying to come up with funny titles for tears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Content. That's funny titles for tears spelled differently is uh, pretty much just our show. <laughs> I do like the idea of all these dark things that Barbie is saying are coming because Gloria is taking her daughter's Barbie and playing with her as an adult with deep-seated concerns and fears. Yes, I think that's super fun. Dark, crazy, and weird would definitely be the tear. Yep. Is that her parenting, though? Her life is bleeding into her parenting. Yeah. She's stressed at work. She's stressed from being pushed down, unappreciated, held back, and that comes home with her, right? How she talks to her daughter about the world. You could tell by the way her daughter talks to Barbie when she first meets her. That Gloria's daughter is taking lessons from her mom. So yeah, dark, weird, and crazy, but also kind of wonderful because of just how fiercely she loves her daughter and wants to prepare her daughter for the world ahead of her. And, you know, her whole rant about womanhood and motherhood is instant legend. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely spectacular. Mm. Well, and just the fact that, like, in a, in a clearly loving way, she's obviously doing everything in that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, her husband <laughs> is portrayed as the nicest, sweetest, complete loser. <laughs> I love the offhand comment that he gets when the three of them are skating off into Barbie land and they're like, shouldn't we tell dad? And like, eh, he'll be fine. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, he's, he's unimportant here. <laughs> well, the film's comment on what society is expecting of women versus expecting of men is that he can be lethargic and kind of apathetic and still be lovable because that's just how we see men. We don't really hold them to much of a standard. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's working on his Duolingo. He's improving himself. Right? <laughs> Good for him. He's not sitting there drooling watching Sports Center. He's a he's a cut above the rest. Oh boy, what a uh, winner! <laughs> that's where I would put her. And I think all of these characters so far are are good parents. Not perfect parents, but then who is me? Mm -mm. No one. Couldn't name one. <laughs> Definitely not me. But I'm not gonna claim that. <laughs> Next up we have Spider-Man and that's Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and Miles' parents who are called Jefferson and Rio. And I kind of feel like we should focus more on Jefferson because that father-son relationship is definitely a core to the whole movie. For sure, yeah. It, uh, you know, dramatically it's written really well to have like the, the pressures that Jefferson is putting on Miles be the things that he needs to overcome in order to step into his superhero powers. Like, that's just good writing. Yeah. It's not maybe the best parenting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... But it's understandable parenting. Like, it, you it want is. your There's kid to arc. excel. There's a journey he goes on. Well, what, what does Miles say to him? Like, maybe you should get off the kid's ass a little bit? Like, what is it? <laughs> 
I look at him, I would rank him as you'll understand when you're older. So I have five kids, right? And the stereotype, which is absolutely true, is that the later kids get a completely different parent than the earlier kids, uh -huh. right? Because you're learning, right? And it cannot help, and this is going to sound harsh, and I don't mean it harsh, but it cannot help but be guinea pigs. Like the early kids, like you're trying out, okay, is this going to work? Is this, <laughs> is this, what about this? And my brother had a similar thing. My brother talks about my dad being mean and nasty and harsh. But by the time my dad got to me, because I was the last kid, just nothing but sweetness. And like almost nothing was a big deal. Everything was manageable. Everything was, it's okay. And I, I know my kids are definitely getting that experience. And I see that with Jefferson. I mean, they've, they've got the one kid. And so there are no later kids to benefit from the lessons that Jefferson's getting from Miles. Right. From, like you're saying, there's an arc. And he's growing into fatherhood as he goes. And what I do like about Jefferson is his heart is 100% in it, oh, yeah. right? And that covers many a parenting mistake is when your kid knows that you absolutely adore them and everything you do comes from a place of genuine care, that makes up for a lot. And the moment when Jefferson shows up at his dorm room and he's locked out and he just talks through the door uh -huh. and like apologizes and tells him I'm here for you. Yeah, just thinking of it's, it. We're not man, even watching We're not even crying. watching the movie and I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think as well an iconic Jefferson moment for me is when he drops Miles off at school and on the <laughs> megaphone thing of the On the PA car, system. Like, you uh -huh. have to say I love you back. Dad, I love you. <laughs> as a teenager, that is a horrific experience. But I'm watching this just being like iconic. Absolutely. Uh, I, was, I was choking laughing watching that in the theater. Like it was so funny, especially sitting there with my kids who my oldest at the time was eight and just like, oh, I'm going to do this to you in middle school. And he's like, <laughs> oh, dad. And I've done it to him in middle school. <laughs> okay. Is Jefferson going into you'll understand when you're older then? Yeah. Because he, he, he understands by the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, he got older. <laughs> and then Rio, Miles' mom, I feel like we don't get enough of her to really make a judgment. So I feel like just putting her in, you're doing great. Because she just seems like she's doing great. Yeah. We get we get more of her in the later films. Ooh. Or film. I've not well, seen film. Her. I'm right, sure no. we'll get more of her in the third Yeah, but well. in the second film, we get quite a bit more of her. Okay, well, there we go. Well, where would you, without so... spoiling it for me, where would you put her? Oh, you haven't seen the second one yet? Oh, she's goals. I have not. Yeah, she's goals. Goals? Okay. She's goals by the second one. Up you go, goals. Rio. And, and what makes her goals is she's got the warmth and the wit and the encouragement of the easy A parents with a, bit, a little bit of, hey, you're still a kid, yeah. so let me share some wisdom and some guidance that's going to help you out and figure things out. W without saying, here's what you well, have she, to yeah, do. Yeah, she's not making rules. She's like discussing with him, mm -hmm. how can I help you decide what your own rules should be? Yeah, she asks great questions to get him thinking. Yeah. And so that's that's what I would say she's parenting goals. Oh, okay, I'm excited to see that. All right, next up is the kids are all right, and we have Julie and Nick who are a gay couple and then I've also kind of included Paul in here although we can't call him a dad but he definitely becomes like a father figure. He attempts to do it yeah. <laughs> yeah the sperm donor attempting to dad his sperm donor children. The kind of interesting thing here that when you were talking about like the laissez-faire parenting in easy A of we'll just sit back and maybe our child will come to us with their issues they don't. Jules and Nick do the like what's going on tell us. <laughs> Kind yeah. Of like, <laughs> we will pry this information out of you. But again, it comes from this like deep love and care of like, we just want to know what's happening with our babies. Yeah. <laughs> It is very type A parenting though. I'd say for them, you're doing great. Again, I think you're doing great is the category for parents who are not like nailing everything, but their heart's in the right place. And the kids know their heart's in the right place, right? Going back to someone who's not on this list, but going back to Henry Jones Sr., his heart was in the right place, but he never showed that. And his son never saw that, right? Yeah. Right. until later in their life together. And so not only do they care about their kids, their kids know, right? And so even though their kids roll their eyes at them or, or get frustrated with them, they also know these people have my my back, my parents have my back at any time. Whereas with Mark Ruffalo's character, here's the thing, speaking of, of <laughs> movies where I just see the actors, like, I'm like, this Mark Ruffalo, this Julianne Moore, this Annette Benning. Like I know the characters have names, but Mark Ruffalo's character, I, I would put at bare minimum. Yeah, he, he donated some sperm, that is literally the bare minimum. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's you in a dish in a magazine, like that's not a lot of parenting work. Uh, so he, here's the thing, he shows up like, oh cool, like this is just like some cool new thing for him to do, and for him to have people that he can like kind of mentor but also have them look up to him and it's mm, about these kids his think I'm amazing. yeah and it's yeah. about his ego I'm not saying he doesn't care but it all kind of comes back to him yeah. which is why he behaves very selfishly and doesn't really mind yes Julianne Moore he, like they have they have an affair but she 
he's devastated. Yes. And he's kind of like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like he's he's completely disrupted this family system, and he's like, chill, bro. And it's yeah. Hey, it's all cool. Don't let the fact that he's Mark Ruffalo distract you that his actions are heinous. He's. <laughs> True. Just because he's super likable doesn't change that fact. <laughs> so I think I would put Jules, Julianne Moore's character, uh -huh. I think I would put her at bare minimum for a good chunk of the movie. Yeah. I agree that I think you're doing all right. Or you're doing great. You're doing great. That's the, the tier. The kids are all right. The kids are all right. She's doing great. Uh, <laughs> I, I think she comes around to that at the end. I think Nick, Annette Benning's character, pretty much solidly there through, yeah. through most of it. And I will say a lot of the work that I do is helping couples heal from infidelity. And sometimes that's a marriage killer and they move on on their own. Yeah. But the ones who do make it work, the end of this film models at least the start of that process in a really beautiful human way. Because the pain is acknowledged and it's not swept under the rug. But it's about, okay, is there something here worth fighting for? How are we going to fight? So Yeah, and I think one of the things that we see in this movie that we don't really in the others is not just the parent-child relationships but the relationship the parents have with each other and then yes. how that impacts their parenting as well. Yeah. yeah. But I think I agree. I think I would put them both in You're Doing Great because, I mean, I was watching it and I was like, no, what are you doing? But then you can also feel that they are just doing their best and it is just like who they are and that's just like this phase of parenting that they're in. But you're rooting for them still because you know that they're good people. Next up is Encanto, which comes with a whole host of parents and a grandparent. So many parents. <laughs> yeah, so many parents because the grandparent, also a parent. I want to tackle this with Alma, a boy and then the two sets of parents that we have. So Mirabelle's parents and then the, the cousins' parents. The one with the weather, Peppa and Felix. There we go. Let's start with the matriarch of the family. Okay, starting with Abuela Alma Ganto. I think I'm gonna go with weird, dark, and crazy. <laughs> She's obviously operating completely out of love. She's doing everything that she thinks is going to work. She's doing the best she can. But it's literally dark and crazy. And no es bueno. <laughs> and yeah. no es bueno. I know a lot of people online would say bare minimum because there's so many issues there. To me, I look at bare minimum as you're not really showing up. And she's showing up. She is working so hard. It's just the things she's doing are catastrophic. Yeah. And so this is a funny thing to say about a woman her age, but you'll understand when you're older is where I'd put her. <laughs> because, okay. because she lacks perspective taking of what's going on with Mirabel. She lacks understanding of other people's experience. She lives in this leadership role, but for her leadership is taking charge of everything instead of truly collaborating. And what she arrives to at the end is you're doing great and hopefully on her way to parenting goals. And so a lot of these characters don't stay stagnant. Like in one, in one tier through the film, they have growth arcs but that's what I'd say about Abuela. Yeah, I'm leaning towards also, you'll understand when you're older, but also from my perspective of just like, I don't know what it's like to have triplets and to have your husband die and be a grandparent. Like, I don't know. So maybe she's doing great in the circumstances that she has and also have magic. What's that like? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Raising a magical family. Uh, I guess we'll all understand when we're older. <laughs> we'll all understand when we're older. It's true. Okay, we'll put her in there. Okay, what about Mirabel's parents, Julieta? and Augustine. I feel like they're doing great. I just feel like they're lovely and they're kind and they are really supportive of Mirabelle not having any powers. I kind of wish they like extended that to stand up for her a little bit more yeah. to the other family members. It feels like the love that they have for her is very like just within their family unit rather than protecting her from all of it's, the external forces as well. Yeah, because they're not challenging sort of the systems that Abuela has set up. They're doing as well as they can in their own system, but yeah. Their system exists inside this other system yeah. and they're not pushing back on any of the negativity that's coming from that. Parenting, if you think about it, it's like when you start your own family, you can start calling the shots and you can start doing things your own way, but you're still very much influenced by how you were parented and the other family members and relatives that are around you. And I, with the like intergenerational living, you can't escape that as much. Yeah, I do wonder how much of that for us is influenced by Anglo culture, where you very much sort of start your own family and move out. We don't have that right. intergenerational thing where we're all in sort of a big compound. You see this in Latin and you see this in Asian cultures as well. And a lot of times then the patriarch or the matriarch or, or both or whoever at the kind of at the top of the pyramid, it is a cultural expectation to show deference, right? right? And so I, I don't want to say this is what they should do because maybe that's not what they should do. Maybe that's not how their culture functions, right? I will say I agree with you though. They both have what I call healer personality types. They're very warm and nurturing. Healer personality types don't like conflict. And so it makes sense that they'd say, oh man, our extended family is super intense. So within the walls of our own home, we're going to make sure that Mirabelle feels nurtured and accepted and loved, but it takes a little extra something
something to push back and they don't have it. <laughs> Would you agree they're doing great? They're doing great. I, yeah. They're doing great. And then Peppa and Felix. My instinct is weird dark crazy. Mostly because of all of the moments that Peppa is on screen. She's having a bit of a meltdown with her thunderstorms. Yes. <laughs> but I don't know about their parenting. We don't really get a huge insight into their parenting of their kids. Yeah, we don't get a ton about their parenting, but we do get enough of Pepper to understand that like she's very much a hard on her sleeve kind of person. I don't think behind closed doors she's a lot different than what she's like in yeah. the real world. Yeah, I would agree. Weird dark and crazy yep. but how fun is that super fun they seem like really fun parents especially oh, felix as well you get like fun yeah. vibes from him felix gives off real strong like soccer football dad vibes <laughs> just like super cheering his kids on and like super enthusiastic all the time yeah <laughs> right next up we have mr and mrs bennett from pride and prejudice and i'm talking the 2006 the kira knightley kira one. knightley pride and, and yep. okay. the reason i wanted to include this is because a recent rewatch that i did i saw suddenly realized that my husband is Mr. Bennett. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, you're married to Mr. Bennett. Every scene he was in, I was like, oh my God, it's Dan, that's Dan. <laughs> I'd never seen it before, but I was just like, okay, there we go. I understand Mr. Bennett a whole lot more now. <laughs> now, the real question, Hannah, is did that prompt a round of introspection, how much of Mrs. Bennett are you? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> 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 because I do think that they just complement each other so well. Like, you can't have Mr. Bennett's calm demeanor without the contrast of Mrs. Bennett. Otherwise, it's just not as poignant. But yeah, how do, how do we feel about them as parents? <laughs> if we're ranking them as a parental unit, I think it's, ooh, ooh. ooh. <laughs> this is tough because they're so very, very different. I have them as individuals. I can't even put them together as a unit because yeah. they, they pull in such opposite directions. I would put Mrs. Bennett as you'll understand when you're older. My instinct was bare minimum, but that's not the case. She's flitting about here and there. She's with doing all sorts so of, much. She's doing so much. So out of concern good. for her her family and her family making it in this Regency era with all of its mores and rules and, and stuff. But man, she just doesn't get it. <laughs> She, she understands the, the rules of society to a point, and that's the lens through which she sees the world, but actually approaching her children on a human level, at least in the film. I haven't read the book. I've seen the BBC miniseries, but that's not the one we're talking about. The film does a very good job. Of capturing her essence, so okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think she just lacks understanding, you know, and when Mr. Bennett says, if you don't marry Mr. Collins, your mother will never talk to you again, and I will never talk to you again if you do, yeah. right? <laughs> it, especially in context, because Elizabeth doesn't want to marry Mary Collins and he's like yeah don't don't betray yourself I will be so hurt that you betrayed yourself but he's parenting goals he's parenting goals for sure I would agree like I I think because of the way that he listens to Lizzie but in that scene I don't think he's being a very good co-parent no he's <laughs> he's not modeling great relationships for his daughter <laughs> in that moment he is being an exceptional parent yeah so it's yeah. I think if you put them together as a unit it's weird dark and crazy yeah I I'm tempted to put Mrs. Bennett in weird, dark, and crazy. I think the the pressures of the society that she lives in and what she is able to access and what she is able to do within the constraints of the power that she has in that society, it turns her weird, dark, and crazy. Yeah, yeah. awesome. I love this. All right. All righty. Yeah, this was great fun. We did it. I'm really happy with where we have everyone. And just generally, everyone's doing great. You're all doing great. <laughs> Not sarcastic. We are really all just doing our best. But yeah, thank you both so much for joining me and ranking a bunch of movie parents. And make sure to watch the Easy A video that we're gonna be doing over on Cinema Therapy as well. And where else can the people find you guys online? Yeah, just come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I live in Utah, you'll find it. No, we're at therapy underscore cinema on Instagram and X, whatever the hell it is. So stupid. I guess we're still on there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, go to thecinematherapy.com and you can find all of our stuff there. Yeah. We've got all kinds of stuff. We've got merch. <laughs> go on, plug your merch on my channel. Why okay. the hell not? We, we got merch, we got popcorn, and we got our actual YouTube channel, Cinema Therapy. Oh yeah, I guess you could come to our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, we'll start there. Which is excellent. I absolutely love your YouTube channel. It's so good. Let us know what you think of those different movies and the parents in the comments. If you agree or disagree with some of our thoughts and rankings of them, let us know. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you both for joining me and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone.